Hello everybody, uh, this is Rainier and okay, the, the lesson today will be um, like a second part to the previous lesson in which we analyzed the game Prajabov against Gelfand. Okay, today I plan to analyze uh, the game played in 2008 by Nightish with the white pieces against Kramnik in the Petrov defense. So let's get to the line where it's starting. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight F6, and now of course this is the main line. Bishop D3 and okay, Knight C6. The other option is Bishop D6, which is not the subject today. Castle. Now Bishop E7, Rook E1. Yeah, and, th and this is the first start of the line that uh, we are analyzing. Um, of course, the main line in this position is c4, which is also very interesting in my opinion. Uh, in the Petrov defense, I know for many of the white players, they find it very boring and like black is almost equalizing, but the thing is that, in my opinion, white is always slightly better. If both sides play correct, and it should be a draw, but I don't think the main lines should be avoided. Okay, rook e1, bishop g4, and now c4. This is a very interesting variation, which includes uh, a pawn sacrifice. For more explanation, you can also rely on the previous video of, of mine that I recorded for the site, because uh, we're going to get a little bit deeper in this game. So. All right. After c4, black is, is uh, white is essentially sacrificing the pawn on d4. Mm, but of course, black cannot take it now because if knight d4, bishop e4 wins a piece. So knight f6, knight c3, and now bishop takes on f3. The alternative is, like I explained in the previous lesson, is d takes on c4, the bishop takes on c4. And after castle, white is, I think it's clearly better after d5, like Kasparov played against Timon. He has more space, he has an easier development, and after knight a5, bishop d3, just look at the knight on a5, uh, white is going to play h3, bishop f4, g4, knight e5 maybe. So black plays c6, h3. And now rook e5. This is the way Kasparov played with white in this position. After bishop g6, bishop g5, bishop d6, and rook e2. Always, always slightly better for white. This is the game went bishop b4, bishop f6, and now Timon took with the pawn, which is um, just perhaps a little better than taking with the queen. Taking with the queen may be risky, not after knight e4. White keeps a, a very pleasant advantage, but there is also the chance to play uh, bishop takes on g6, and in case of uh, queen takes on g6, knight e5, white also keeps a slight advantage. h takes on g6 is very, very bad after knight e4, for example. And after queen d8, queen a4. The queen uh, is always going to a4, and now with the h file open, it's even worse for black. Because after c takes on d5, knight g5, the bishop moves and queen h4 next. If the bishop doesn't move, a3 is, is coming next, so knight c6 or nothing works. If you place knight c6, just a3 and queen h4, white wings. All right. Um, so after bishop takes, g takes on f6, rook c1, rook c8, and knight e4. White, white was better for free, I think. All right. So this is not what the Petrov players want to play. The alternative is uh, knight takes on d4. And after c takes on d5, bishop takes, d takes, and now uh, 
c5. Yeah, mm, I explained this move in the previous lesson, and now d takes on c6, knight takes on c6, and is about equal. However, I believe that after c5, white should play d6 with a little advantage for more. So, but there is another move that I didn't mention in the previous lesson that is castling here. This might be interesting. And after bishop a7, knight takes, queen takes on d4, white is a, is a pawn up at this point. And it's probably slightly better for him, but not not a lot better. I mean, probably it's possible that black can hold. Of course, I, w I still would I would take uh, white, but it's not so much advantage as uh, as you might think. Okay, so okay, let's go back. Bishop takes on f3 is the the main main line. Queen takes on f3, knight takes on d4, and now queen d1. The move first played by Kasparov. Knight e6, and in the Rajavov against Gelfand game, we saw uh, bishop f5 in this position. And after d takes on c4, queen a4, check. And after c6, bishop takes on e6. Um, well, actually, uh, Gelfand didn't took on c4, but I, I mentioned that d takes on c4 could be the best best way to equalize. This is the way Kramnik played against Anand. The game went d takes on c4, check on a4, c6, bishop takes, queen takes on c4, and now castle. And here I I propose the, the move rook takes on e6 instead of queen takes on e6. With just a slight advantage. Okay, but today we're not uh, Analyzing bishop f5, we are analyzing the move c takes on d5. This, this is the move that knight is used to surprise uh, Kramnik. The funny thing is that the move, uh, this line, uh, didn't took, didn't take uh, many followers in the, uh, after this game. Just a few games, and that's it. They they quit uh, playing it. Knight takes, bishop b5 check, c6. It's almost. Uh, everything, almost everything is forced here. Um, knight takes on d5, of course, he takes b5, and now there are many, uh, there are a few moves I can play. a4 is a chance, queen b3, queen h5. Queen b3 and queen h5 are about the same, for example. Queen b3, and castle, and now uh, knight takes on e7. This could happen with the queen on h5, and after queen e7, the queen takes on b5, and it it transposes to the same position. It's an almost even position. However, uh, Ivanchuk managed to win uh, with white here against Kramnik. The game is uh, is about even, but it's still playable for both sides. I have to say about that game, uh, it was very impressive by Ivanchuk, but the game was level uh, at this point. The game went a6, queen b3, bishop e3, and now uh, h3. h6, rook d1, perhaps black should play b5 in this position, for example. The game is about equal, but Ivan should won. Queen d5, the bishop on e3 is slightly better than the knight on e6. White has a, a little bit of more activity, but that's it. Queen e8, just to show you how the game went. h4, trying to fix the pawns on the king side, the pawn goes to h5. Okay, um, probably if black plays queen c8 here, Ivanchuk was not going to repeat, he has to move queen e5 first, with the same idea of rook d4 and rook g4. 
Win B8. Now that pin is very annoying. And Rook A1. And here we have an endgame that Ivanchuk won. He has a pass pawn on the queen side. The knight on f8 doesn't play. Uh, so I don't know. It is if you ask me, it is it's a position that require a precise place for both sides if you want to squeeze an advantage out of this. But this is very safe. That in, in the other hand, you have uh, you can say that it's it's, uh, it's very safe. White has to play really bad to lose, so he can he can press uh, for free in this position if the position is equal, just sell for for a draw. Okay, after rook a c a c eight, also possible is to play rook c one, a six and h three. This is the way uh, Kasparov's game against Karpov went, and after knight d four, they agreed to to draw. All right. What else? Okay. Um, after Queen B3, Castle is also possible to play Queen takes on B5 immediately. A very interesting move. Now Bishop C5. And in one game, White played the move Rook D1, which is a little bit, bit uh, tricky for Black. Now after the natural Rook C8, he immediately uh, got into slightly worse position. I think black has to play here queen h4 and after bishop e3 the trades only three knight takes white is only a slightly better just just a tiny better but in the game he played rook c8 and then after bishop e3 b6 queen a4 white white has some pressure here a7 is hanging also the the queen on d8 you can see that doesn't have many comfortable squares after bishop takes knight takes on e3 the knight will return to the, the square d5 or f5 and the centralized queen is uh, centralized queen is just very very strong a6 and now rook d3 it just wants to double the rooks and and also, there might be some threats like knight f6. Actually, in the game, white actually uh, played knight f6 after rook c5, b4, rook c4, and then knight f6. g takes, rook g3, f6, h4, winning. Queen g7 transforms the game into a better game for white. Okay, so this is a very interesting game, but at this point, after the move rook d1, like I said, black should probably go for queen h4. But again, the, everything is quite safe for white. It's a tiny edge, and almost, uh, and you have to play really bad with white to lose. So, okay, in this position, there is another critical move that is. Uh, Bishop f4. This is the move knight displayed. Okay, first of all, you prevent black from from castling because if he castles now, knight takes on e7, and bishop d6 follows, winning the exchange. So he must play knight takes on f4, and now rook takes on e7, keeps the king in the center forever. So king f8. Now you can see that. Uh, White has to defend the knight on d5, but also the rook on e7. So rook e5, queen d6, and knightish play the novelty here. Queen d2. Very, very good move. Previously, rook f5 had been played as the move that saves the rooks, uh, saves the rook and defends the knight as well. So rook d8, knight e3, queen takes, and this is no advantage at all. Knight e6, you can see that 
black is safe in this position. Actually, they agreed to draw right now. Kasimdianov against uh, Artur Yusupov in 2001. There aren't many games with this variation, that's a good thing. Let's go back to the move knight is played. Queen d2. Leaving the rook on e5 uh, unprotected. Okay, let's see what are the alternatives for black. For example, queen takes on e5 is met by queen b4 check. Of course, if king g8, knight d7 wings, the double check on on g6 next. So king e8 is the only move, and now rook e1. But the, this move rook e1 is is just uh, not good enough because black plays knight e2 check, and after king f1, rook c8, a good move. The move queen takes d5 after rook takes on e2. If king d8, queen e7, and if king c8, rook c2. And okay, it's a worse version uh, because black uh, should give the queen on, on on c4 now, and he loses all the pawns on the king side. So, and if king d7, rook d2, and queen c3, the same thing. White takes on g7 on the next move with a, a better game. But the move rook c8 is, is very, very good. Because if white takes on e2, then rook c1 uh, actually wins. So f4, and after queen takes on d5, rook takes on e2, king d7, rook d2. And now rook c5. And after rook takes on d5, rook takes on d5, queen b3, and king e6. And white doesn't get any of the pawns, of the black pawns, so it's, it's just an equal position. Probably white uh, should seek for a perpetual check be before uh, black gets organized. So, so what's What's wrong with queen e5? Well, after king e8, instead of rook e1, very critical is the move queen takes b5. I analyzed this game immediately after it was played in 2008. And now I analyzed it again and, and found out that uh, there is a game played in this with this move. Uh, after king d8, rook d1, the idea is to give a, a good discovery check. The king cannot go to c8 because of knight b6 and the queen on e5 is hanging. So if knight e2, king h1, and after knight d4, queen takes on b7. White is down a whole rook, but he has a very annoying attack. Rook c8, and now h3 with the idea of f4. I concluded my analysis here in 2008 and I saw that it was interesting but I couldn't figure out any direct win. Now I see that one game was played from this position and now black played rook c5 and okay the game went on 93 you can see that white is down a whole rook, but he's taking, first of all, he's taking on f7, uh, on a7. He's also playing knight f5 at some point. Actually, that might, that's the threat, knight f5. And, okay. So it's, it's, it's not easy at all for, for black. The game continues rook e8, knight f5, rook c7, queen b8. Rook takes on d4 check. Queen takes on d4 doesn't work because of queen b5 in between move. So king c6, queen b3. Now if queen takes on f5, queen a4 and the rook on e8 is hanging. So rook e6, queen f3 check. You can see now that uh, white 
basically is only down on exchange and the black king is in great danger so that's plenty of compensation rook b6 king b6 sorry rook b4 king c5 and now rook b8 very good move which threatening mate in two moves b4 check king c4 queen b3 checkmate queen e1 queen e5 g3 and now queen a3 check king b5 knight e6 and another key move in the game rook d8 with the deadly threat of queen a4 king c5 or, ki or king c5 and then queen c4 checkmate so queen d4 queen f3 check and after queen d5 white could have played queen f4 threatening queen a4 check and that wings in the game he took on d5 which is also winning and knight e8 with the winning endgame okay after king e5 knight c7 white went on to win a few moves later so this might be the critical line if black has a defense there that actually works from this position then okay the line is not good enough but this is still worth a try that's what happens if black takes on e5 um, that's not the move Kranik played uh, but I, I want to uh, uh, make a point here white must analyze carefully this line after queen takes on e5 because basically after queen b4 king e8 and and now queen b5 is the critical move this is almost force I, I mean black has to play knight e2 and knight uh, and knight d4 sacrificing the queen is very bad now because uh, white wings uh, either the pawn on b7 or the pawn on f7 so after king check g4 white was better this was actually played in one game that white won but okay a, a, a queen and a pawn for two rooks is is very good so 92 and now knight d4 and after queen b7 rook c8 h3 this is the critical position that deserves analysis i think maybe maybe rook e8 right now for black that might be a move but yet i'm not sure i'm not sure exactly what to, what to say here i like white chances and i i like white position but I suggest you use your engine for for this variation. All right, let's go back to the Kramnik game. After Queen D2, probably surprised by the novelty, he played Knight G6. Didn't uh, take the rook. Rook E1. Okay, what's the point? The idea is, okay, uh, White wants to play Rook A to D1, and how does black uh, is going to develop his king side and, and place his king uh, into a safe square the idea is rook d1 and then move the queen away so uh, white, can, can white can start an attack and maybe a discover attack with a knight or something just rook d1 and queen e2 or queen c2 so f6 rook d1 and king f7 Kramnik of course knows that he must uh, communicate the rooks and get his king out of the way immediately but now a very unpleasant move queen e3 with the idea of queen b3 or knight f4 knight f4 attacks the queen don't forget and the queen cannot take because there is queen e6 or rook d7 
So let's see. The move Klanik played was rook e8, natural. Let's see other moves. In case of rook d8, then knight e7. It's impossible to take on d1 because of queen e6. Check. And then if queen f8, you have queen g8. So if queen takes on e7, queen b3 check. Defends the rook on d1. This is the important thing. After king f8, takes on e7. Yeah. White wins the queen. The game is not over, but it's clearly better for white. If instead black plays queen c6, this is also another uh, interesting move. Then white has knight b4. Clearing the d file and uh, attacking the queen, try, trying to uh, force the queen to 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 leave the serve rank, and so so I can attack the king with queen e6 or queen b3 check. So queen c8. If queen c4, then rook d7, and after king f8, b3. Queen b4, now the square e6 is not uh, under control, so white can play queen e6, and black has nothing better than give the queen. But of course this is, this is lost uh, for black. So queen c8 is slightly better, but after queen b3 check, queen c4, rook d7. If king f8, queen a3. looks looks strong and if king g8 queen d1 that that also looks very strong he cannot take the knight and the idea of b3 again and queen d5 is is still there just look at black's king side all right kramnik plays rook e8 and now knight e7 Queen takes on e7, this is pretty much force. If rook takes on e7, rook takes on d6. White wins the exchange and, um, and the game probably. So after queen e7, queen b3, king f8, black only has two pieces for his queen. The game is basically lost here. Rook e8, of course d3. Knight e5, king g2, knight c6. Very interesting, but not not very difficult. The, this this part of the game, how white uh, concluded after a6, queen b6, a4, gaining a space on the queen side, taking squares away from the knight. And now f4. You can see how white uh, didn't take any chances. King g8, black can't do anything. So h5, king h8. Rook d7, knight d6, and queen d5. White will win the b7 pawn, and that that's it. That's that's the end of the game. Okay, so this is a very interesting line. The only disappointment is that I cannot say at this moment what is the improvement for black and why this line uh, isn't played more often. Uh, it's a new line. I never tried it myself. Uh, I mean, it's a new line for me. I studied it, but never never played it. And, and for for black I don't know exactly I don't know I don't play the opening with black so I'm I'm not uh, up to date with the theory so it's very hard to say what is the 
the drawback of the line. It looks very interesting to me. If queen e5, like I said here, after if if I can arrive in this position by force and and queen e5 is a move that uh, is not good enough for black after queen b4, king e8, and queen b5. If this is, it proves to be good for white, then I, I'm not sure what's the improvement. Where to improve with black? Is that's that's a good question. Okay, everybody. I hope you enjoy the lesson. And I don't know if you want. Uh, this is a good. This is a good line to study. Okay. Thank you very much. And I see you in the next.